My name is Marissa, and you're watching Hot Rod Madness. If you've ever been blinded by the chrome of a classic ride, felt the rumble of a big block motor, ever dreamed of building, owning, or driving a heart-pounding street machine, you've got it. Hot Rod Madness. At Hot Rod Madness, we believe that every car has a story, whether it's a weekend cruiser or a trophy-winning classic. Here to bring you those stories is the host of Hot Rod Madness, Tim the Milkman, along with the Hot Rod Madness crew. Let's roll into the historic square of Marietta, Georgia with Hot Rod Madness and check out the Hubcaps and History Classic Car Show, part of the Marietta Street Fest. Hi, Krista, how are you? Good, how are you? All right, Lynn. Hey, how are you doing? All right, sir. Good deal. Okay, which one of y'all putting this event on? Are both of you doing well, it? Well, we're doing this in partnership this year. This is the 11th annual Hubcaps and History All right. as a part of the Marietta Street Fest, and it is a fundraiser for the museum. And okay. this year, Len and Lenny's Salon, which he owns over on Church Street, just north of here, mm -hmm. uh, has been kind enough to bring the awards for this year and do all the balloting. And uh, they're bowling pin awards, but I don't know who the artist was. Len knows. Okay, who is the artist, uh, Len? One of our employees, Stella Vega, mm -hmm. uh, went through and she kind of hand painted. We have, you know, bowling pins from a bowling alley, okay. and we went through and just kind of painted them. We did a best in show and a best motorcycle and yeah, a People's cool. Choice Award. So yeah, the. They're kind of one of a kind, a little more unique trophies versus right. just your typical car trophy. That's pretty cool, and I see you got quite an event going on. There's there's a lot of people that showed up with their classic rides. And we're looking at this sweet little Roadster here that's a GTO. There's a Mercedes over there, and that Mercedes got a small block Chevy in it. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, we range really from the 1930s all the way up almost to the 1980s. Yeah. We let it. We have a few more modern cars that are limited edition here this year, um, but we just love to have everybody out as a part of Hubcaps in history, and we'll do it again next year for sure, third weekend in September. All right. Okay, we'll look forward to that. That's pretty cool. And I'm sure Len will be here partnering back up with us because we've Okay. We've had right. great response this year, for sure. Well, all right. We appreciate y'all putting on this event so we can all come out and enjoy the classic rides. Well, thank you for and coming. Then, and there's also a, a, a festival going on mm -hmm. here. What Marietta, is this all about? Marietta Street Fest. It's the 24th year, and as I mentioned earlier, it is a fundraiser for the Marietta Museum of History. Okay. Uh, we do this this year. It's Saturday and Sunday. It used to be just Saturdays, but we're going to keep going with that two-day festival. Mm -hmm. It's a family fun fest. Everybody in the family can enjoy it, from the cars to the tiny tots to the vendors. Okay. We're just here on the square enjoying this beautiful day. All right, so the museum, what does it consist of? Uh, the history of Marietta in here? Uh, oh, we do the history of Marietta and Cobb County, and mm -hmm. we're located right by the railroad tracks. If you can't hear yeah. that train oh, coming, yeah. <laughs> uh, we uh, do the history from the Native Americans all the way up to the present. We've got an extensive gun collection, so if you're anybody who loves long right. arm firearms, pistols, okay. we got them all. And we do rotating exhibits, and one of them right now is toys and games from the baby boomer generation. Wow, how about that? All right. They're great. So. Very cool. Well, all right, there you have it, folks. Square Marietta, it's on fire today. Steve, how are you, sir? I'm good, sir. How are you? All right, doing just fine, man. Here on the square of Marietta, looking at some classic rides. Yes, sir. Hey, man, step a little closer to this thing. I'm going to ask you some questions about this beautiful white Thunderbird. I know it draws quite a crowd. It's kind of hard to hard to get around it ourselves, but however, how big's the motor in this thing, man? It's a 292. It's the original motor for this car. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yes, sir. Well, all right. Now, how, how long have you had this thing? I've had it about six years. Six years? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, have you restored it or done anything to it? We completely restored this car. Uh, mm -hmm. Bought it out of California and uh, brought it back here and did about a two-year restoration on it. Nice. Okay. All right, Steve, do you have your own shop or what? Uh, my own garage, yeah. yes. Okay. You did this in your backyard? Uh, not all of it, no. All right. I was going, wow, man, what a build <laughs> in your backyard, dude. This thing's beautiful. Well, thank you. I'm a big fan of the red and white 
Oh, good. Yeah, so, you know, I had to come over and check it out. Oh. And it, it's it's kind of hard keeping the people off of this thing just so we can talk about it. This is a crowd pleaser here, buddy. It is. A lot of people like this car, for uh, mm -hmm. specifically because of the color, the white with yes, the red sure. and white interior. Very attractive. And, and uh, it being a two-seater, it yeah. you know, attracts a lot of attention, oh, yeah. too, because it's first American uh, sports car. There you go, man. Now, does it have the hard top with it? Yes, sir. It okay. has a hard top and a soft top. All right. Does it come with Suzanne Summers, maybe? Uh, no, no, not really. <laughs> no, not really. Close, Just but not you and your wife, right? That's, That's exactly right. Got gotcha, you. I understand. <laughs> I had to ask that. <laughs> hey, uh, there's nothing wrong with throwing a little humor in there. Right? No, not at all. Suzanne was in a in a '57, though. Yeah, well, that's the difference. Yeah. Okay, got gotcha. you. But your hard top does have the portholes, right? No. No. Okay. No. That's the difference between that the is uh, well, the uh, portholes didn't come out in the Thunderbird until mid six uh, 1956. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Beautiful car, man. Thank you. I love the, always love the chrome trim around the windshields and how they laid these cars out. It's just beautiful, man. Yeah, there's wow. a lot, definitely a lot of chrome on a lot of the 50s cars. That's oh, yeah. what attracts me to them. Yes, sir. Yeah, it looks like fresh paint on this thing, man. Beautiful. Well, Thank all you. right, Steve, I appreciate you showing your ride on All Rod Madness, buddy. Hey, Tom, how are you, sir? Hey, fine, thank you, sir. All right, welcome to the Square of Marietta, man, with all these classic cars and beautiful, hot rods. Beautiful, beautiful car it? show, yes, sir. It's Perfect a, weather for it, too. Oh, man. absolutely, very nice. It's yes, not sir. raining on your classic Chevette mm, today? Not a bit, no. no sir, sir. I, I had to come over and ask you, man, you know, no, there's not a lot of these left around, and you just see them on the street every day. Now, this is the only one I've seen in, in a long time. Right, sir. Uh, these were throwaway cars. Yeah, and, they were. And they came in a, in a, in a play uh, during the Arab, Arab mm -hmm. embargo, and they built them for uh, 10 years, from 76, yeah. it's the first year, to 1986. And then they stopped uh, making them. These were the most produced cars and the most popular cars during that 10-year period. Were. Yes, sir. Yeah, they were. I think everybody I knew had one. <laughs> that or a Pinto. Down. Yes, sir. And now they're erased, gone forever, uh, and except it, for Tom, who preserves one up to this caliber. Wow. Have, wow. Thank you, sir. Um, that's that's amazing, man. Well, so did you buy you. it new? No, sir. Uh, I bought it at a yard sale. It was underneath a <laughs> lean-to, and I gave yard uh, sale. <laughs> 300 bucks okay. five years ago. All right. And I, I restored it. Yes, and, sir. Uh, uh, and it's been a fun project. I gotta say, you did an excellent job. Now, is that the original color and all? It's close to it. It's okay. Good, I have a brochure in the back that's yeah. very similar. Gotcha. Yes, okay, sir. we'll get to that in just a minute. I want to look at the engine a little, a little okay. closer. This is the original Iron Duke, as yes, they sir. called them. Yeah, it's 1.6 liter. Yes, sir. Uh, it's the original Iron Duke. Okay. Um, the uh, air filter back then was a throwaway filter. It was good for 60,000 miles, oh, and, boy. and then you just throw it away. Now you can get plenty of those nowadays, right? Uh, no. No, you those, can't. Those days are gone. Yes, sir. Wow. So what are you going to replace it with when that one burns out? Well, I don't drive it that much, so I'll probably, okay. in my time, I yeah. probably won't put 60,000 miles right, on right. it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll last about 20 years, right? Yeah, and I'll be gone. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, you hand this down to your kids or whatever. Well, my wife, she's, uh, she's okay. 20 years younger, so she'll get it. That's Susan okay. over there. Really nice, man. I mean, you restored a Chevette. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Nobody does that, man. I'll tell you, a hard part about these is mm -hmm. they don't make replacement parts. And I found a gentleman wow. in Washington that bought all the inventory. Yeah. And I was able to put everything back to original GM. No kidding. Uh, yeah. So somebody bought up all the parts and they're... Uh, yes, sir. And then even the shift knob and a gas tank cap, everything yeah. is uh, original GM. Oh, wow. Cool. Yes, well, that's sir. good that somebody has preserved all the parts and exactly, kept them just yes. for people like you that want to restore these classics. Yes, sir. Um, the, the, like on this hood, uh, mm -hmm. the only thing they changed for the first three years was the grill. Okay. And then, uh, and then in, in the 80s, they went from a chrome bumper to a, a uh, black and rubber bumper. Yeah, it looks all solid plastic, don't it? Right. Yeah, the yeah. first three years was loaded with chrome yeah, that's and, and cool. aluminum. Yes, sir. Thank that you. That is cool. Uh, these were made in uh, Delaware uh -huh. and also Atlanta, Georgia, where these were produced. Yeah. And the engines were built, I believe, in Detroit. And this is a body by Fisher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. A very nice build, man. Well, thank you. Did you do all the work in your, in, yes, sir. In your garage at home? Or yes, what? sir, I did. And my neighbor <laughs> shot the first coat of paint. It's, yeah. it's, not a clear, uh, it's not a clear coat. It's just okay. one coat of paint. And he shot it in his garage. Wow. And, uh, Good did, job, Tom. Uh, thank you. He did yeah. a very nice job. Yes. All right, it cost me a case of beer. 
Wow, really? Okay. Uh, plus, well, I had to buy the paint. Well, you, you came out really good then. I did, really did. <laughs> yeah. All right, can we get a peek at the interior? Oh, absolutely. We go? Oh, maybe yeah. over here. Open the passenger door and let's check it out, Tom. Wow, this thing looks all original on the inside, Tom. It, it is. Um, Very cool. It's all, and, and this is, there's two different transmissions. And, and um, in the 80s, they went with a, a different a short shift transmission. This has a long shift, it's a metric transmission. Mm -hmm. But uh, the engines were built, like I said, in, in uh, I believe, Detroit. And um, uh, I can't tell you much more about the interior. Uh, I, I, I had the seats done, but I put the headliner in myself. Okay. And uh, that was a challenge. Oh, I bet it was. It was. Yeah, yeah. But it was fun. It was a fun project. That's good, man. You had fun doing it. I that did. Is good. I did. Uh, and I, I met a guy that, that uh, told me how to scrape the panels down and redo really? the panel. These are original panels. Okay. And um, and I forget the so coating you, I put on them. Yeah, you but, did a little more than clean them. Oh, yeah. Because those things look brand new, man. They do. They were actually starting to peel, but there's a way if you take your time, you can you can bring it back to what, what they were. Well, all right. And um, uh, here Very is nice. the original brochure. You can see this. All right. He's got documentation in the original brochure for the Chevette. Yes, sir. right wow. there is the, uh, the original colors. Mm -hmm. And that's when I found it um, right there. And I had put a floor pans in because he had the window open. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some right photos of him when he built the thing. Right there is where I found it underneath the lean-to. Yeah, Actually, I was okay. looking at the yard sale, and I asked if they wanted to sell it, and they said sure. Yeah. And um, and it hadn't rode in, uh, hadn't been driven in many years. Yeah. And I put a... A lawnmower battery in it. A lawnmower battery started it and for it you. And it started up after all those years. That? And that old gas. <laughs> wow. And this thing gets about 31 miles to the gallon. I bet it does. You know, and it's amazing how they didn't bring that that technology back. It's so simple and clean. Well, and, they ought to bring it back today, and they can, they can brag about this. That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, and this, this, is, this is a two-barrel carburetor. Well, all right. Maybe, maybe Tom and I, we can show the world that... We used to get good gas mileage with these little cars. And, and now look at today's cheap technology. Ride. And yeah. a cheap ride. Yes, yeah, that's sir. a cheap ride, you know? Yes, well, Tom, I appreciate you showing it here on oh. Hot Rod Madness, buddy. Hot Rod Madness. Oh. Hey, Ted, how you doing, sir? Nice to meet you. All right, sir. Couldn't help but notice the... Uh, the antique camper here, and I had to come up and ask, what year is it? 1937. 1937, wow. There can't be too many of these left around, right? No, there's only about 40 left in America. 40, what's the name on this thing? This is a Pierce Arrow Travel Lodge. It's called a Model B. Okay, Pierce so, Arrow. Yep, that's the company that made the first two presidential limousines in America. Oh, yeah. So they uh, they went out of business in uh, 1938. Interesting, wow. Um, and it's... Um, very modern for its time. It had a uh, had a coal-fired stove and an ice box. Really? It had a pump shower. Um, <laughs> okay. Had uh, glass uh, inlaid cabinets and a porcelain stove. Okay. I mean, porcelain sink rather. It was nice. uh, a really modern camper for the time. All right. So how long have you owned it? About five years. My five wife years. And I, my wife and I bought it to go camping. Okay, so you've had you've had time to do some remodeling in there, right? A little bit. Yeah. Well, what I was going to get at is the. Uh, how hard is it to replace the floor or the ceiling? I know these things rot and they get old and, and worn out. And actually, it's not bad at all. Um, yeah. It actually, uh, it's made out of aircraft aluminum. Okay. So it stays nice and snug and warm on the inside. Yeah. Um, we have a uh, gas heater and um, haven't put in an AC unit yet, but because okay. uh, we didn't want to change the look of the roof. Right, you know? okay, gotcha. But, um, but it's been modernized, so it's got a fridge and a three burner stove and Man, we take it that's, camping. That's cool. Um, in fact, we pull it into a state park, and uh, the camp rangers all have to come out because they've never seen anything like it. Yeah, you know, yeah, everybody's so, got to look at it, man. Everybody's got to look at that, it. That's really know. cool. See, so, the, it's drawing a crowd right now, man. You yeah. can't help but come in here and look at this thing. Uh, it's 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 a unique piece. Oh, yeah, it caught my eye. Jay Leno owns one. Oh, you know, okay. he tows it with a vintage Pierce Arrow of automobile. All right, what do you tow yours with? My wife's car, actually. Okay. Yeah, it's only. Uh, <laughs> It's made out of aircraft aluminum, so it's only 2,200 pounds. Okay, so well, that, very, ain't, that ain't so bad. It's very lightweight. That's probably about the same weight as a Camaro. Yeah, or yeah. a boat. Or a boat. Yep. Yeah. So anything that'll tow a boat will tow it, you know. So, but, uh, yeah, about uh, probably uh, out of the 40 left, about half of those are in museums. Yeah. So okay. it's the only one in the state of Georgia that we wow. know of. 
That's so, pretty cool how you, know. you can bring it to an event and show it off like this, man. It's let, fun. Let Enjoy the people it. see it, man. Yeah, that's what we bought it for. You know, okay. we, it's not a showpiece. We take it camping. We take it to the islands. We you uh, use it. Yeah, yeah cool. we take it to music festivals. Very nice. All right. She's always real popular at music yep. festivals. She named Dolores, yeah. and uh, she's named after a 1930 silent film actress named Dolores Del Rio. Wow. It's actually one of the most uh, famous uh, Mexican uh, actresses of the time. Got gotcha. you. Okay. So um, that you see photos of Dolores on the wall inside. Okay. You know, so she's. Uh, <laughs> She's kind of our mascot. All right. So, you know. Well, we appreciate you showing it on Hot Rod Madness today, buddy. Nice to meet you. All too. right, Ted. You have a great time at the show, man. Thanks. You guys enjoy the weekend. All right.